Hello and welcome to the Wandel IPM PLS View Demands Learning Byte. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. After successfully completing this Learning Byte, you will be able to add demands to the modeled network inside of IPM PLS View and analyze the results of these increased demands on your network. IPM PLS View builds a model of your production network by importing information from that production network into IPM PLS View. All of the nodes, links, tunnels, and demands are inside of MPLS View. So you know the current status of your network, but over time your network will grow and increased demands will be placed upon it. So we can use IPM PLS View to simulate the addition of demands on your network, view the effects of those demands, and how they are routed. Let's take a look at the IPM PLS View administrative interface and see how this works. This is the IPM PLS View administrative interface. And in my topology map, I can see my modeled network. I see all the nodes, all the links that connect them, and so forth. And on the link properties, I've enabled it to display bandwidth utilization on the links that connect the nodes. And just looking at the colors that have been assigned to the link and, and referencing the graph over here on the left-hand side, I can see that currently in my modeled network, most all the links seem to have plenty of available bandwidth. And so I am able to add more demands to my network and see the effect of those demands on the links and on the nodes. So let's go take a look at how to do that. In the network info panel of the administrative interface, I can see all the currently placed demands, what nodes they're flowing between, how much bandwidth they're using and so forth, and the links that make them up. I'd like to add some more demands. So at the bottom of the network info panel, I can click on the add button and add a single demand or I can add multiple demands. Let's start with a single demand first. So I'll select one demand and in the dialog box that appears to configure it, the first thing that's required is specifying a name, in anything you'd like, and you have to identify the two nodes that you'd like to create a demand in between. So I'll say Atlanta and Chicago, for example. So between those two nodes, I'd like to create a demand and the bandwidth option allows me to specify how much demand I'd like to create between those two nodes. So I'm, I'm going to add 100M for 100 megabits, or I could do 100G for gigabits or 100K for kilobits. By selecting the type option, I could even come in and specify you know, this path, how it's routed. I don't want it to have any more than this amount of delay or cross any more than this amount of hops or I don't want it to cross the same site. I have a lot of granular knobs that I can use to tune exactly how this traffic demand will be routed across my modeled network. I can specify additional information, set up priorities, hold priorities, fill out information about you know, the IP addresses of the nodes involved, and even use the paths tab to create explicit route objects that can configure hop by hop the actual path this traffic demand will take between this pair of nodes. And this will create a unidirectional path between two nodes. Now I'd like to show you how to create multiple demands. So I'm going to return to the Add button and say Multiple Demands. I'm going to bring this dialog box down here a little bit to get a better look at it. it. Very similar to creating a single demand, you must create a name or specify a name for the demand, specify the amount of bandwidth you would like this you know, demand to implement on the network, and now same thing as before, I must pick the nodes involved. And in this case, it's multiple demands, so I can add multiple nodes involved here. So I click on the filter button, and in the dialog box that opens up, I'm allowed to specify values that would be used to identify the nodes involved. And I can do it by name, I can do it by IP address, and by hardware type, and so forth. The, I'm going to create a full mesh of demands between all 14 nodes on this network. So the simplest way to specify all available nodes is just to simply click OK. And all the nodes would match this blank filter and they all appear in the node A list. And so I would like to create a demand from all of these nodes. 
to which nodes? Well, to create a full mesh, the simplest thing for me to do is to just simply click copy A to Z and it takes all the nodes that were in the node A from column and, and copies them over to the node Z2 column and I'd like to create bi-directional 300 megabit demands between all of my nodes. And I want to be able to add these demands and view their effects on my model. So I'm going to click add to add the demands to the model. There's 14 nodes here in that old n times n minus 1 formula, you know, 14 times 13. There's 182 demands here in this full mesh I'm creating. So I'm going to say yes. And once they've been added, I'm going to click close on this dialog box. And I can see all my new demands in the demands tab in the network info panel between Atlanta and Denver, Atlanta and Detroit. Here's those 300 meg demands that I would like to model on my network. So the demands have been added into the network info panel, but they haven't actually been placed onto the network topology map. So in the top left hand corner of the IPM PLS view administrative interface, I'll see an update button. And so I'm going to click on this update button to actually have it route these demands across the network. And, and the dialog box says, you know, there's 364 demands currently configured. There's 182 that have already been placed, but I just added 182 more and they have not been placed on the network. So I'm going to go ahead and route those unplaced demands and see what happens. So I say OK and I'm going to focus on my topology map here. And I can see the color of some of my links have changed. The higher up you go on this graph color-wise, the more congested the links appear to be. For example, my LAX to Atlanta link in the LAX to Atlanta direction is 103% utilized currently. Now in the Atlanta to LAX direction, it's only 81% utilized. So I had a little less traffic going in the Atlanta to LAX direction originally. I can see my Houston to Atlanta link is really still, even with those 600 megs of added demands bidirectionally on that link, I haven't oversubscribed that link, but some of them I have. So this is a way to kind of see, adding demands to my network, which links would be affected, which still can grow. And another way to see this is in the menu at the top of the IPM PLS view interface is a report option. And let's open up Report Manager. This is another place to see the effects of your modeling of demands. One of the reports available is under Link Reports, and it's called Planned Link Utilization make this window a little bit bigger here so it might be easier to see and there's a column that will show us the bandwidth utilization percentage on our particular links. I'm going to click on that and sort that and I can see currently the link between Washington DC and Atlanta for example is 126 percent utilized. So I'm oversubscribing that particular interface. I can move this out of the way a little bit and we can kind of look at our Washington DC to Atlanta link and I can see the same value from Washington DC to Atlanta. It's 126 percent utilized. So a couple different ways to kind of see the effects of adding these demands to your modeled network. In this learning by we added demands to the modeled network inside of IPM PLS view and saw how we could analyze the results of these new demands being placed on the network. For more information about Juniper Network's training and certification offerings, please visit our website. Thank you. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.